So, let's talk Wayland. My Wayland talk. Um, reasons you might want to listen. Um, I'm just a guy who works at Intel setting up new hardware, but I get to install uh, Linux on those servers, so that's great. Um, so I touch Linux every day. I'm also a hobbyist. I work on a couple um, projects, and I have a YouTube channel that I do like Linux nonsense on. Here's a, a screenshot of that project that I work on. This is X11 based, but hey, it's a slide that can mm -hmm. take time up, and it's pretty. So there it is. Can you turn on the room light a little bit? Because I'm having trouble seeing yeah, that. There you go. Yeah, probably a bad pick on the yellow, but uh, I like yellow, so. Anyway, um, menuing system I wrote. It actually is the menuing system for the desktop environment before. And I also have been working on a uh, compositor for virtual reality for Raspberry Pis, made possible by the lovely aspherical lenses that are now on the market. So you don't have to do barrel distortion with your compositors anymore. Hooray. So, this is troubleshooting for Wayland, but we're going to go over the X11 tools first so we know how to compare them. So, X is old. Everybody knows this. Uh, as far as software sandcastles go, 33 years is pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's old. When it was first originally made, it was quite beautiful. We had uh, applications that talked to their libraries that went over Xlib that could be piped over a network <coughs> or locally if it was necessary and then it would talk to a socket uh, which would talk to a X server which would talk to your screen and it was it was uh, pretty it worked it had basic um, draw circles draw rectangles draw squares some cool primitives that uh, we used and the the libraries took advantage of um, and this is the earliest picture of X11 I could find with all those pretty primitives. So there it is. We had new features come in. This is, this is like 15 years in one slide, so uh, <laughs> we patched it, we made workarounds, we added features, we added new uh, compositors and input stacks and buffer management models. And we left all the old ones too because, well, we didn't want to deprecate or break old things, so now we just have several <coughs> buffer management uh, models for no reason, or rather to maintain backwards compatibility, so for a reason, but it's getting clunky. We also started to break the old socket type uh, X11 model. We started to add direct rendering, which is where you just give an app shared memory and you just render that shared memory later, which is one of the more common ways to do it and you, you lose your uh, network transparency. So yes, you can pipe X over an SSH session, but it's not transparent anymore. It's not super fast even. Then in Windows released their compositing window manager and so Linux is like, we're going to do that too. So we built Compiz and a bunch of other window managers that did all this compositing where we basically overwrote all of the work the X server was doing and said, we're going to do it anyway and just pass you the finished product. But that allowed us to, <laughs> to build board cubes and stuff with our desktop. Uh, I like it. Some people think it's ridiculous. But then we end up with a model that looks like this. Like, what, what is X11 actually doing well? We're bypassing most of it. We're drawing to a shared buffer instead of going over all these uh, uh, protocols and just going straight to the compositor, which is just going to talk straight to the X11 server and say, draw just this picture. So we're already kind of not using X11, but are at the same time now. Why not X12 then? <laughs> uh, well, one, we got to kill that thing. Two. Wayland is just different. It's not, there's no server that's going to draw circles anywhere. There's no draw a square in this or draw two ellipses and eyeballs that follow your mouse. None of that. Instead, it's a protocol. It's just something you implement in your compositor. 
rather than writing a compositor which overwrites the X11 server. So, protocol. Also, in Wayland, everything is direct render. Everything gets a, a buffer to write to. So it's kind of cool, and it, it adds a security layer because you've got your, you've got a compositor implemented in Wayland that will send input events to its clients. And then the clients are only going to say, hey, I'm ready to share my buffer uh, and display it. So everything's frame perfect. You're, you're going to have your apps tell the compositor when it's ready to be displayed. That's the idea anyway. <laughs> so yeah, let's get into stuff that's broken about it. This, this slide is super, uh, yeah, uh, opinionated maybe, uh, but it, it, yeah, this slide describes why. Oh boy, let's get into some fragmentation problems. Um, I blame NVIDIA entirely for this scenario. Our community really likes GBM. For those that don't know, these are ways your graphics card can talk to your Wayland compositor. And the most popular is GBM. Um, Gnome likes that. KDE guys are very fond of that. Uh, EGL stream is what the NVIDIA guys are like. Let's do this instead. It has so many more features. On, on, on Unfortunately, NVIDIA, you're a dick again, and you didn't make cross-device support. So the KDE guys are like, we don't want to write for this because it's the proprietary driver for NVIDIA. We want to write for everyone instead of just, just the NVIDIA camp on the proprietary driver. Oh, boy. We'll see, yeah, we'll see how that goes. This does make me very sad. Very, very sad. But... In, in my, my loud server room, this doesn't mean anything. Uh, Intel graphics, mostly. We, we don't care about anything besides here's a terminal, and maybe you'll pull up Firefox. <coughs> so not such a big deal if you're running just integrated graphics on a, on a laptop or even a mainframe server or the like. So it has a place to live already. Fedora, of course, gets the first shout out because of they're leading the pack here. They've made it default for a while now. Ubuntu is going to, in their next LTS release, give a Wayland option. And so is OpenSUSE with their leap. This is uh, looking more and more true uh, by the day. So it's kind of why I'm going over both of these things, because you're, you're going to want to know both. All right. You just upgraded your computer. You think everything went well. You reboot it. And you don't see this. You see this. I don't know if that's happened to any of you guys. Yeah, of course. OK, some hands. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> what do you do? On an X11 stack, you would just, this is what I would do. I would run X in it. Why? This will start just the X11 server by itself. Start X is going to try to start everything. But just X in it, X in it by itself. But if you already have one running, you're going to want dash dash colon one, but it's not relevant if it's broken. Two outcomes there. It's going to work, and you're going to see a really ugly terminal and a black screen, or it's not, and you're going to get some debug output that you can plop into your favorite search engine. Also, there'll be a log file at the end of that should read that. Yep, my recommendations. Very likely driver or config issue. Okie dokie. So things to know. If you started an X11 session uh, via X in it and you got this fancy screen, you're going to want to know how to switch back and forth. It's the control alt and the F keys. You have control F1 through F7 are your virtual terminals. And uh, it usually starts at plus one of wherever you were. Control one is the default. So control F1 is probably where you were typing in input. Control F2 is likely that screen. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving on. At this point, you can add a layer and build up, because X11 is amazing, and you can just run things, add things. So I have Compiz as my uh, window manager, but uh, this slide actually just keeps going down. There are so many. I, I'm like, I don't know what to do with these, but there's a lot of window managers. You can run these and see if that's broken. 
Um, and that's what I've done here is I started my, my compiz. So if, if compiz is running, it's definitely not that. Uh, and if you were getting a black login screen and you can run all of that stuff, it's definitely your display manager because it, you, you got a black login screen and your X11 session works fine. Might as well run it all. This is a testing thing. Don't run your desktop environment as root or do whatever you want. Uh, okay, yeah, now this is the stuff you came for, right? Yeah, wait, hooray. All right, back to this point. You, you came in here, what are you going to do? Well, first things first, what can break on Wayland? Wayland itself is a protocol and not likely to break, per se. You kind of install it, and it's installed. Um, things that can break, though, are your compositor, which Weston, Mutter, Kwin, it varies from desktop to desktop. But uh, Wayland has pushed a lot of the heavy lifting into the compositor layer. If something broke, it's very likely in there. But it could also be your toolkits, GTK Plus and the like. Yep, so the first things to do, it, like X in it, if your system's broken, is run the reference compositor, Wayland. So it's pretty cool. Oh, I guess I have some notes about this. X Wayland, I tried running X Wayland in Weston, which is how you run your X apps. It didn't work very well, so I wouldn't use it on databases. But it's a very good troubleshooting step. Launch, or Weston launch. <laughs> That's the command. All you have to run, and it works beautifully. You either see this or you don't. I hope you see that. Because if that works, then a lot of your stack works. Wayland itself is working. So we can continue troubleshooting. Or you're going to get a lot of nonsense garbage, just like if you couldn't run your X11 server. And uh, fortunately, it's going to also give you a log file and stuff that you can easily troubleshoot. But if, if you can't run Weston, it's, uh, you're not going to be able to run really any of the other Wayland compositors. So I would always troubleshoot with Weston and then move up to whatever desktop environment you want to troubleshoot afterwards. Because whatever issue you're going to find in, Weston's probably going to solve your issue in the other. And the equivalent of running it all or running your desktop environment is super not good right now in Wayland. For example, if you were back at the, this, this screen here and you wanted to actually launch your Wayland session, the command is horrible. And make Katie, a shell script. <laughs> make a shell script. That's the right idea. It's not great. Um, they could maybe boil that down to start Plasma Compositor for KDE eventually. And GNOME, last I checked, they deprecated the way that worked. <sighs> Good luck. <laughs> so yeah, if, if that works, you're expecting to see KDE, and it's going to look mostly the same as your KDE you're used to. But why? What's the benefit? We already have this X11 thing that works. Well, there's one problem. X11 by default pipes uh, crap over the a network or over a socket, right? And by default, it's drawing parts of the screen. But it's kind of it's one of its flaws that screen tearing will occur. You could be rendering part of a string and draw the screen, or rendering part of a string, render the screen, and then draw the rest of it. And then you get this weird flicker effect. Uh, Wayland is designed in a way that everything's supposed to be frame perfect. So there's no screen tearing, AKA the apps tell the compositor, hey, I'm ready to be drawn, and then it draws it. Therefore, it, there's no, oh, half states of being drawn in the screen tearing. So every app is double, buffled, du uh, double buffered by app? Uh, not really. Uh, Weston, or uh, Wayland can really only do one kind of render, and it's copy to screen. So it's really just sharing a buffer one buffer to an app, that app can write what it wants to the buffer, and then it's displayed to the screen. That's what, what Wayland's doing. So it's really just one buffer that gets copied. By default, X11 has an extra buffer, buffer copy that's not needed, but it's irrelevant. Um, I don't know if that answered your question very well, but that's what I got for you. It half answered and half didn't. Great. Maybe more at the end. How about that? Um, 
better support for integrated graphics. Uh, I've actually seen this. Um, if you're running on crabby hardware, Wayland is actually lighter weight, believe it or not. Uh, it kind of doesn't surprise me because X11 is kind of this mess of everything. Uh, also, if, I don't know if you've ever tried this, plugging in monitors with different DPIs. This guy in the back is like, yeah, yeah, I've got this. Yeah, well, me too. It was pretty horrible. Uh, X11 just can't do it. They've tried pretty hard. Uh, there's some kludgy, like, fixes for it. No, they're terrible. This can be done in Wayland, technically. Monitors with different DPIs. Yeah, 4K. a projector or a TV. Their laptop. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you have a, a 4K TV and you want to drive that from a regular HD thing, you can get you make your text not look so weird. Okay, and by fundamentalness, this is better for security. I don't know how easy it is to write. Uh, okay, I do know how easy it is to write. It it's so easy to make an X app that takes screenshots of other X apps or to send input events to other X. Hey, there's libraries for me to do it. It's so easy. In Wayland, that's a function of the compositor. Uh, AKA, everybody has to write it for themselves, and good luck with that. Also, uh, snapshotting apps is fundamentally not a thing. The only, only piece of software in position to screenshot applications and send events is the compositor itself. So if that's not a feature that's implemented in the compositor, it's not gonna be a thing. Okay, this is definitely good news for anyone who likes mobile Linux. Uh, LibHybris is what we're, what's allowing us to run Wayland on Android hardware. So a lot of um, Linux distributions are taking advantage of that and jumping on. So I actually use Selfish OS. It's my favorite. Uh, it's a beautiful operating system. Um, the Librem 5 phone, I know a lot of people are excited for this one to come out. I am, personally. That's going to be driven by Wayland as well. So we'll have, to, we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah, yeah. So the rendering is just, by default, better in Wayland. Uh, you get a direct buffer every time. X11, that's an option, but not necessarily. You could use the outdated. Uh, <laughs> APIs that draw primitives, uh, but you probably shouldn't do that. Yep. Uh, I don't know how many people are interested in VR for Linux, but Wayland is by far the better option for VR. Uh, there's already been a couple spawn in. Safe Spaces is the newest one that I have found. It looks like this. Now, I think that's super cool, having a headset on and being able to like look around at your windows and maybe that's just a me thing, but cool. All right, Wayland. <laughs> and it has the potential to bridge all this crap, which is pretty exciting for me because I'm the guy that's like, let's run our desktop apps on our phones because it's a computer and I bought it. So maybe with, uh, with this Wayland stuff, we will. And finally, it replaces X. Hooray, screw X. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not going to be totally happy about this, though. You're going to miss a few things. This, yeah. Who uses the middle mouse buffer? Yeah, OK. Everybody. OK, half at least. The KDE guys <laughs> have decided that it doesn't sound like a very good feature. Uh, the GNOME guys are like, we already made a protocol for it, so <laughs> I wish I liked GNOME. Anyway, <laughs> XKill. I'm sure you guys have had to kill an application when this box I doesn't pop up. I remember how to do that, though. You've oh, never? The command, I meant the window manager thing where you do it with like a hotkey. Oh, interesting. There at least was a way in some window managers to do that. It's control Def state. Well, there you go. Yeah? Um, I came in late, so I, you may have already uh, mentioned this, but um, I, I, I keep seeing this idea of protocols. Um, I've been um, sort of tracking, I use i3, so I've been tracking Sway 
Yeah. It's just had a, it's, it's, it's in like 1.0 alpha, and there's a big thing, there's this WLC root, WL roots thing. Yeah. Um, but they they seem very excited about this idea of protocols, and they're like, so, so for instance, for Clipboard, they implemented the GTK, the Gnome. Oh, one. I didn't realize that they had done that. Good. Just in this new release. Um, Good. And sort of like, they're, they're, there's like a screenshotting protocol, and I'm really interested. I, I want to yeah, um, protocols might save us here. If we could make a standard for all of our compositors Ooh. to sit on top of, mm -hmm. then we're in good shape. And honestly, we need that as a community. <coughs> uh, right now, we're all like, oh, compositors have to do that. Uh, we've, we've trashed a, a lot of the crap into the compositor. Uh, this is a script that I wrote one night because I wanted to click something a lot of times. That's not going to be a thing. Um, I have a pretty sophisticated text bind key setup that I come up with. It's yeah. Like a, a scheme based like key, keyboard. If you if you want to have like complicated input stuff that you customize, it's pretty cool. But um, I I want to get that working on Wayland. So <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, you're gonna have to look for a compositor. You might even need to write your own or extend one. So. It's like you just need to have a custom input driver for the compositor, though. And that's where protocols would come in. Like, you have, like, Maybe, yeah. If there was a protocol that everybody could use and it rely on, that would be the way to go about it so you could extend it. A virtual device that your kernel is feeding input to your compositor through. Definitely go for the IRCs. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that sounds like a good idea to me. But Oh, yeah. Probably none of you guys do this. I do this. Um, start multiple desktops at the same time, run a compositor from KDE and my, on my GNOME computer, or well, GNOME 2 or Mate, whatever. Mixing these things is less and less a uh, possibility, especially in Wayland. Um, I mean, as time's gone by though, uh, GNOME's used Mutter and KDE's using KWIN, so it's kind of already this way, but more so in Wayland. Compiz is going to die. No, I applause. I love Compiz. Uh, I yeah, I get you though. It's a little bit ugly. No, it's not. It's awesome. Anyway, it moving on. Eye candy only. Yeah, it is. It is eye candy. What's wrong with eye candy? Keeps your computer warm. Anyway, you're not gonna be able to do this. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest issues. Is how are we going to make a VNC like? Product or whatnot. Well, compositor <laughs> issues. This is a fun one. Yeah. Can you go back and explain a little bit more about X over SSH and why Wayland breaks it and what's the workaround? And what's the workaround? Okay, great. Because, because that is that is one of my serious workflows. And, and you don't want it to break. Yeah. I don't want it to break. It, it is a deal stopper. Well, I can tell you what, there's been a little bit of progress in making it work. Anyway, SS, or X over SSH, for those that don't know, you can uh, pipe your X session over an SSH uh, session with minus capital X, I think, is what minus, it is. Or, or yeah. minus Y. It minus seems y. like, shouldn't it, you still be able to use Wayland as the, like, if you want to run a remote X application on your local Wayland using X Wayland, it, I would imagine X Wayland probably if you want to run an X app, you can definitely pipe an X app over SSH regardless. Um, but you should yeah, still you be able to do your workflow if, if you're running Wayland on, on the machine directly. Yeah, X Wayland allows you to run X applications. So if your remote server is an X application and you wanted it to run over X, yeah, you could do that still. Um, but if you have a, a Wayland application, no, you, you can't do that. Wayland by default can't. So if you wanted to pipe your whole desktop across, Right now, the only thing in position to actually do that is your compositor. Um, and unless the compositor's implemented a uh, feature, that, that's ridiculous. That's way beyond the scope of a compositor, in my opinion. But yeah, we need to have protocols step in here. Some way for everybody to grab the screen in a secure fashion. We'll, we'll, hopefully, the community figures that out. Work, is it RDP part of the protocol? That's uh, and they had a read-only <coughs> working so far, I thought. Um, I think it would depend highly on the compositor. Maybe Weston's working on this issue even. If Weston's doing it, then it'll probably end up in all of them because it's the, com the reference compositor. But as of when I researched it, yeah, remote sessions are st 
still not a really base. thing. Yeah. One app that's X11 based, you can make work. A desktop, if it's an X11 desktop, great. If not, no. Um, yeah, this. I hate this so much. I hate games that do this. Okay, I great. Them to start window. So you're you're probably more familiar with the bugs, like what you the the games don't change resolutions, the rest goes black, or they crash. Or they or... weirdly because they don't see that you've got two screens yeah. or all sorts of crap, or they change the resolution and it trashes all of your window layout for your other applications. I just hate it so much. Yep, yep. Uh, I don't have a defense here besides it's, it definitely sucks. Yep. So actually, <laughs> coming to the, the source for for Wayland a little bit to try to understand how the uh, IDPI, or how the multi-resolution stuff works. Mm. And as I understand it, the compositor tells each client, each, each window, sure. each I, window, um, what resolution it would like, it, it, what the ideal resolution is. And then the, the client, the window, uh, can either render at that resolution, or it can say, I can't actually do that. I'm going to render at this lower resolution. And then it's the job of the compositor to upscale it which is how the multi-resolution thing works. And that's a it's not a, it's not a, a startup for that window type of thing. It's a, it's a continuous thing. It's like, it's, I think it's every frame. Oh, wow. So like if you drag a window to a, from a high resolution display to a low resolution display, a proper Wayland app will be like, oh, well now I'm gonna render at this other resolution because the compositor told me to. Very good. So I, 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 yeah, that's very cool. So this is being worked on, and hopefully in the near future, your games won't screw up so bad. Hooray. Um, we talked about this. Good luck, Scream. There's actually one for GNOME out there. It's on GitHub. You can use it. I tried to use it. Uh, you might be able to use it. I think it's actually the right answer here. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, I actually ran into some load issues on my computer, too. Um, I haven't experienced anything like this except for over a KVM or something like that where mouse keys get repeated and whatnot. Uh, I only experienced this, though, when I was maxing out my CPU. Um, is, is that because the compositor, like, in its main thread is actually... Doing it must be. So it, that's something that can be fixed. I mean, it's, it's not like a fundamental problem. Yeah, yeah, it's just a thing that, that happens in, in GNOME and KDE right now, which is what most people are using on Wayland. Um, so apparently there's, uh, I read about this on the, the Fedora wiki, there's some interesting key intercept issues. So if you're uh, running a vert manager or VNC viewer, then uh, sending those particular keystrokes across is not going to work for whatever reason. Fundamentally. So, uh, as you might have picked up at this point, it's pretty compositor heavy. We're, we're throwing a lot of work onto that, which, in my opinion, is a good thing because in the X11 side of things, we wrote compositors anyway, and it just overwrote a lot of the work the X server was doing. So now we're just like, well, screw the X server. We're just going to have a, a simple, straightforward rendering platform and. We threw all this crap into there, and now you've got to implement that per uh, compositor. Or maybe make some protocols. That'll fix up all of this. Make it easier. Also, something that's a deterrent for me is I'm a Python developer, and Py Wayland 0.0.1a dev 7 sounds pretty sketchy as a development library to pick. I'm sure the docs are not good, too. Just throwing that out there. All right, this is actually pretty interesting. We've been working on desktop environments, KDE, hooray. Note, though, if you have the proprietary uh, NVIDIA driver, you're not going to run KDE well, or at all, probably. And the copy buffer thing is, yep, uh, GNOME. GNOME is GNOME, which is always GNOME, hooray. Moonlight, desktop environment. Uh, this one's kind of cool. It's like maybe going to be the replacement for lightweight, super fast desktops. Uh, it was a rework of, a code, of the code bases between Razor QT and LXDE, so that's a good pick. Uh, it still kind of looks like crap, so it's early. Hooray. Sway, you're a user of Sway, right? Um, 
I'm an i3 user, and I... I3 the, alternative. The, sway, the, the, the new Sway is a completely different code base. Like, it literally, they, they, they started off with an empty directory. Wow. Um, and it, so the old one was WLC-based, and the new one is this WL Roots compositor library. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just tested it out on the train, and it... I don't know who, who, who used i3, but it, it was missing some basic features. Oh, no. So, so but... It, but they're gonna have a 1.0 release in like a month, and so hopefully maybe they'll have those features. All right, so it's still early, but an option for the i3 fans. Um, another one that looks pretty cool. Uh, very simple. Looks actually identical to this one. Hawaii. Uh, which is not bad as menu. Hooray. And I actually thought Enlightenment was already on Wayland, but reading their wiki, it sounds like you shouldn't use it on a daily basis in Wayland. It has work to be done. So soon to be Enlightenment. And that is the most ridiculous picture of Enlightenment I could find. When? Well, phones. I would say we're in good shape with phones already. My phone's running Wayland because it's cool. And some of these are going to as well. Um, Postmarket OS is interesting. It's kind of like a community developed mobile distro. Um, yeah. I don't know if you know what any of those are, but they're cool mobile Linux distros. And <laughs> I don't really like Mir at this point. I mean, I don't not like it. It had features that uh, Wayland doesn't implement that it did. But at the same time, I'm glad the community is finally coming together and picking a protocol. So even just a couple years ago, this would have been a, an issue where we're like, oh, and there's Wayland and Mir being pushed by different people. But now, even Ubuntu Touch is planning to switch to the Wayland protocol with LibHybris, which is good. That means you'll be able to run it on a lot of different ha Android hardware uh, with little effort. When am I going to see it in the server room? When are you guys going to see it in the server room? Well. For me, most likely, it's whenever it ends up in Red Hat, because I use a lot of Red Hat. But Ubuntu's relevant. Yeah? Any idea how Debian is doing on this? Debian. I didn't really look into that very much. But Ubuntu's doing it, so I would be really surprised if Debian wasn't. They're all about stability. Nope, didn't research that. Sorry. Debian. Yeah? Am, am I to understand from that previous slide that uh, Ubuntu 1804 will only do Wayland? No, no, no. It's just going to be an option. Okay, and I not even the default option, I should say. Because okay, I just installed 18.04 on Tuesday, yeah. and I have issues with it. People freaked out because they got rid of Unity, and, right? Like, well, they did it in 17.03. <laughs> and actually, it doesn't even get that far when I'm with the machine. It blinks back and forth between graphics mode and text mode for the console. Oh, wow. Maybe two times. What? Over two and a half minutes, and then it's fine. No problems after that. <laughs> Only 52. Always 52. Always 52. <laughs> the, the fact that it eventually gets fixed yeah. is surprising to me. Like, if it kept doing it, then I'd understand. Yeah, yes. I agree. Why 52? Retry 52 times and stop being dumb? Clearly it's a weird code. Clearly it's for something else to finish loading. <laughs> yes. That could be it. Yeah, it takes 52. It's some kind of race condition. Is it exactly two and a half minutes? Um, it's, you know, plus or minus 10 seconds, but, yeah. Wise. That's weird. That's a definitely a weird bug. Yeah, yeah. and that's it why. It sounds like the systemd configuration files for some of the things in it are broken. Is that been released fully, or is it still a beta? My understanding is it's a full release. Oh, boy. It came out on Thursday. Well. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, 1804 yeah. did, yeah. Ah. We're going to see a 18.04.1 soon. Okay, well. The release is actually 16.04.5 Okay. That's, that's what you can remember. You can update in six. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So, I really, really hope that we can see something not known in the server room. There were a couple of lightweight ones that might be big, but uh, uh, it's very likely I'm actually going to see a lot of gnome in the server room on Wayland. I don't know how I feel about that, but that's probably going to happen. Uh, gaming. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. And here's my recommendations. You should run it if uh, 
you need light access or lightweight access to a terminal, basic uh, web browsing, and if you can run it, you should because you're gonna eventually anyway. So I don't think that you spell check this slide. Oh well. <laughs> Whoops. And then I took sh I took from, from here's here's all the stuff that I took from and questions. Go. Oh yes. So where does the actual uh, frame sync occur in the Wayland compositing protocol? So uh, as far as my understanding goes, it's it's all in the compositor. You might know more though. I'm not actually. I just dug into like that one. Sure. So it's uh, from my understanding, it's. <coughs> The compositor does all of the work, and all it does is it, it'll draw the buffer when an application's ready. So application starts, gets shared memory, application writes to the, the graphics memory. When it's ready, it sends a message to the compositor saying, hey, this is already frame perfect, draw it. And then it does. Does it make any sense? I'm wondering how it uh, does it actually always work. Coordinates that last step you mentioned there among multiple apps. I've actually not written things. one. Unfortunately, the Pi Wayland's still quite early, so yeah, I wouldn't know entirely. That would be where I imagine it has to do something similar to what X is doing right now, unless the graphics card supports just an entire bulk update of here's a new region, take it, which it might. Yeah, it might indeed. All right. Well, any other questions? One thing I was wondering about is just um, the, 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 there's this concept of protocols in Wayland, yep. and they're like defined in XML, I think, or they're extensible, and uh, you, it could be. you can drop them in at compile time, and I feel like they're going to be important, um, but I yeah. don't really understand Especially the as they're more and more adopted. What we, we're looking for is uh, kind of a community to adopt, uh, maybe something that's not even written yet, uh, to get all those basic protocols for screen capture and et cetera, and mouse buffering, yeah? A lot of the slides for Wayland that I've seen even recently continue to mention EGL, yeah. which I guess is a portable version for phones of OpenGL, or something. The is EGL there... stream? Something. Is sure. there a variant of Wayland that is based around uh, using Vulkan for rendering? Not that I've heard of. Um, and I don't know if those are even related. Um, EGL stream is is a way for the the graphics card to get 3D acceleration to the compositor. So uh, it's like an alternative to GBM. So uh, I'm not really sure how to answer that. Not related to EGL yeah. stream, then no. Yeah, not really. No, no, no. I meant the slides explicitly mentioned just EGL, as in like it's a standard for talking to graphics hardware that is not EGL stream. <coughs> Okay, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure I answered your question then. Sorry. Yeah. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? This one? Yes. Thank you. The place says I stole things from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So with X, you get all these libraries that do things, you know, like draw circles, change the text size, pick up on. Yeah, those are things. primitives. That's part of the X11 protocol yeah. itself. What is the equivalent? So it's left undefined. Yeah. So uh, the, the primitives are left very much undefined. So you can draw a circle however you might want to. You really just get a piece of graphics memory, and you can use anything you want to draw to it. So the, short, the short version is, if you want to run an old X app on Wayland, Use what, uh, X, X Wayland. Wayland. So there is a way to run your X applications. Well, but the, 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 the issue is people come along and you got this thing that's been running for a long time and all of a sudden you got all these security issues and X has got a lot of those security the issues. The answer to your question there is X Wayland, which is basically putting that application in its own sandbox that speaks X to, to just that application. So then I've got to keep yep. using all of the old X libraries. If you have an old application, that is the easiest way of dealing with the problem. My understanding as a non-programmer is that uh, almost nothing uses those primitives anymore in the desktop environment libraries like GTK and Qt are where all that stuff is done, and you'll probably use those anyway. So yeah. If you're using a thing that already does support Wayland, then you recompile it against the new version of the library. Yeah, if you're using like GTK, then it's going to be pretty easy. You just update to the latest version of GTK and it'll work on Wayland. Yeah, exactly what he was saying. Right. 
So if I've got an application that's written in Python yeah. that uses the one of the Python uh, GUI libraries, such as uh, Tinker or um, uh, I'm forgetting a block, but uh, that should just go over without any changes to my Python software. Is that correct? Theoretically, uh, it's all based <laughs> on the the libraries it's based on. If it's like GTK two, then you're gonna have your uh, X eleven stuff having to drive that because GTK2 was never ported. GTK3, on the other hand, was. So depends on what they're using to render. Um, and you know for a QT4 and QT5, right? Like QT4 oh, yeah, is... that's what I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Will um, Wayland or one of the lower layers of like Weston support something like Xenorama so that I can have a desktop with three PCI cards in it? Um, the last I heard on that was uh, that is not really being focused on at all. Uh, good luck with that. I think they're really just trying to go with uh, basic graphics for the moment. Multiple cards will come later, I think. <laughs> About the same time they solve the network protocol, I would guess. <laughs> yeah, maybe. All right, any other questions? All right, well, break. That's it. Hooray, Wayland. Oh no, I should have made more slides.